Hola, hola, buenas tardes, bienvenidas y bienvenidos a mi canal uh, YouTube. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We have a very, very uh, uh, couple of guests today. Uh, I've been expecting um, to make contact and I finally did. I think I first became a friend with uh, the, the man on the right. Uh, and I've been listening to the albums for a long time now, I think 30 something years. So welcome. Mr. John Dyson and Mr. Paul Ward. Wow. Good evening. Hola. Hi, Christian. How are you? Everything fine? Very fine, thank you. We're good, thank you. How's yourself? Ah, uh, fine, thank you. Uh, we're having like a nice sunny day here, though it's not too hot. You know, the weather is strange these days. I think it's, it's strange everywhere. How's how's it? How are things your way? Yeah, we've had a beautiful day today, but cold. Oh, lots, okay. Lots of sunshine, but uh -huh. cold. Typical is, English day. <laughs> is there any chance that you could turn up the volume of your voices, by the way? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One, two, one, two. Yeah, that's, that's okay, that's okay. Well, okay. Uh, it's an honor really to be having this conversation because as I was saying, um, I first saw this special record with this uh, photograph of the space and wave star. Well, this sounds interesting. And then I found a 16 or 18 minute track. I said, hmm, this has to be in my collection. And then I wasn't disappointed at all. And I was very surprised because uh, this was really the first time, I think it was the first time that I was uh, listening to something that would sound like other bands that I really loved, you know, uh, like Tangerine Dream. And I'd never heard a, a British band uh, making this sound so I was really amazed and I think the same hap the same thing happened to many people here though in Chile uh, electronic music is uh, has uh, rarely been promoted at all on radio we used to have like a couple of radios back in the late 70s and uh, 80s that would have a a, 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 sun, a late night show of this type of music sometimes along with progressive rock so the opportunity we had to get to know about this band was just, you know, almost in existence. So I'm glad that I found my way to promote music uh, first on Concierto FM until 88, from 83 until 88, and then on Futuro FM, Futuro the 88.9 in Santiago from July 1889 until uh, 1996. So people were really, really uh, surprised uh, uh, to find this music, not only on special shows, but during the whole day. So it was really uh, a miracle. So I'm glad that you're here because your music uh, gave you a big, big place in the music that we want to listen to forever. You know, uh, I'm being very honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I admire your work a lot. So I have a few questions for you. Uh, so what about uh, starting right away? I would like to know, okay. yeah, well, yeah, well, sorry, you wanted to say something first, maybe <laughs> I'm going too fast. No, 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 car you, you carry on, you're fine. I, I was just going to say, Christian, it, it's guys like you that are the reason that we're still making music. It if, is. if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing this. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, well, okay. We're going to get into a, you know, a feedback <laughs> of half an hour. Thank you. So let me ask you, uh, where does the name of the project Wavestar come from? Well, when I first met Dave Ward Hunt, who was my partner back in the early 80s, uh, music partner, I should say, um, he, we, we were making the music and we thought, well, we heard about Inkeys, which we'll talk about later, Dennis and Jeanette Emsley. Uh, and we heard about, Dave knew about them and he said well if we're going to send them the music we need a name so he said well we're dealing in sound and sound waves and we both like the universe and the cosmos so wave star and it, it was as simple as that really right I now... met David in 80, 81 I think 82 okay and we worked on the music and we put the first cassette album out in 1984 mind well, journey i think we should introduce uh, this man with a fox t-shirt sitting next to you be because oh, yes. not many people will remember his important role on the first album i mean the second album i mean i, I mean i don't know you yeah. tell us about it yeah yeah well I, I, I was there there from the start 
uh, the guys would call me in for the technical help. So really at that point, all I was doing was really advising and a bit of mix advice and some mastering and mm. things like that, weren't I really? Mm. But uh, after that, <clears throat> as I went, I became a professional producer and engineer at that point. Uh, and then I thought they realised they could trust me then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we've always trusted him, really. Right, that's good. Uh, we just, we just, yeah, but it just means to keep going on. Now, uh, have you had the chance to, to record? Uh, I, I suppose I teach English to sound engineering students. Hey, he wants to say hello. Can you see him? Uh, hey! <laughs> Uh, I think that recording, for example, a symphonic orchestra must be very, very difficult, uh, which is obviously different from recording, you know, every, where everything is plugged, you know, to a, a console. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, oh, is it more difficult? It's not really. It's, it's really the same process. Uh, what what is genuinely the most difficult thing that I do, which which I, I do a lot with some of the other musicians that I work with, and that's try to create a synthetic orchestra, to try and create create the sound of an orchestra that is convincing and sounds real. If if you've got a real orchestra, that's that's very simple. If you want to make synth music and you want to keep synth sounding like synths, electronic, that's very simple. It's that crossover that's that's difficult, but really, in, in all other respects, it's very much the same job. Okay. Okay. Good. I. Uh, by the way, are you fond of foxes? I love foxes. <laughs> <laughs> They're one of my favorite animals. Foxes and hedgehogs. Oh yeah, they are really lovely. Yeah. Uh, we we <laughs> rarely ever with foxes we don't see here. I mean, and, and unless you live in the countryside. Or I, I've never seen one. I'd like to see one and meet one one day. Uh, what about John? Do you like animals? Are you oh, fond of animals too? Yeah, I love animals. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, these uh, the, Paul, Paul and his wife Catherine, they love all the animals. Uh -huh. Don't too little. <laughs> We just travel the world to see animals. It's really. They even, they, they even went to the other side of the world to New Zealand to see. <laughs> A wombat. We did. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Admirable. Yeah. Now, uh, from my journey from 1984 to Nightwinds, I think it came out in 2021. Did it? Um, no. Nightwinds was 2018. 20, 2018, right. So how do, you, how do you evaluate that 13-year span regarding developing as a composer, well, a band, performers, And even the marketeer of your own product, because uh, you have like five Wavestar albums out, two Wavestar two albums, and six solo albums, I think. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you feel everything has developed uh, in every sense? It's gone downhill. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a happy accident. <laughs> okay. So we, we um, I think we first met in. Eighty-three. It was well. It was well before my journey, wasn't it? Oh, it was before my yeah, journey. Before yeah. My journey. Um, Paul, I met I met Dave Ward Hunt through an advertisement he put in an electronic music magazine, uh, mainly for electronics, the hardware, uh, and he put an ad in saying, uh, "Anybody interested in electronic music in Sheffield?" So I contacted Dave, and that's how we two got together. Then you put... I did something did, similar. He did something similar a little later, <clears throat> and uh, by this time we'd, we'd met other people, and we used to meet regularly. Was it once a month? Yeah, we met in a, in a, a, a pub or a, a, pub. a bar, as a you, bar, as you <laughs> might call it. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a bar. Down in Sheffield, they they let us use one of their rooms, and people used to bring instruments uh, oh. to show other people. So it was a great little group of people, and many of them we got to know well. Uh, did Ian Body come? No, 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 because no. he was way up north, wasn't he? But St St Stefan, the the third member of Wavestar Two, he was involved. 
uh, because when we did the first uh, Wave Star concert in 85, 1985, at the UK Electronica, um, uh, Stefan and Anthony Thrasher were part of the organisation on the technical side. So that's where we sort of first knew those people. But I'd known Paul before then, of course. Um, and then, but Paul couldn't be there in 1985 because once again, they were on vacation. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's true. Well, he deserved those vacations, didn't he? Maybe. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> But from from that from then on, uh, like in nineteen eighty six, Paul played with Wave Star. Oh, uh, so he missed the first concert, but from the second one on, we regularly played all together. Okay, so we've known okay. each other a long, long time. I was going to ask you about you. You just mentioned him. I was going to ask you about how, uh, if, if in the UK scene of those days uh you were friendly connected uh, with people like ian body paul nagel mark shriver that i could just get to know only but you know why uh from my catalog a friend of mine photocopied for me from no less than lotus records and then uh, i i read yeah i read i read names like tim blake uh, kitaro in those days was you know what spaceship but what what are those names and then uh, Ian Body was very kind because I sent him a letter and he sent me a copy of, you know, his first album and I started playing his music as well. So uh, I was going to ask you if you were all connected or if you, there were collaborations of some sort apart from the pub thing? No, no, we, 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 we have a loose connection, as we say here. Uh, we know them all and we are still friendly, but we, we haven't really collaborated not, musically not collaborations i mean we, we've 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 been on the same the same bill on concerts many times so yes, we, yeah. we, 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 know we, know well. yeah. we know each other well we know each other well but because we because uh, paul was doing our production and dave and i were doing the music mainly uh, and we got other people in um and it was we were concentrating on our music as opposed to collaborating with other musicians I mean, if, if, if someone had said at the time, do you want to do a collaboration? Then we would. I have collaborated with other people since mm. in the later years, uh, like uh, Mike Shipway uh, and people like that. Um, but it's, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a regular thing. We used to meet them at concerts or if we were on the same uh, bill. Uh, so, but we always have a good chat, and we all make fun of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps us healthy. <laughs> very, very English. Uh, very English. <laughs> uh, now, uh, you already mentioned them, but anyway, uh, Dennis and Jeanette Emsley and the Inkies tapes that I, I think I got my copy from Lotus Records back then. Uh, it was the Lotus Records era for me. Uh, they were really meaningful to a couple of people here in Chile or three. Uh, you just said that they were important in the Wavestar, in the early years of Wavestar, weren't they? We, 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 we owed uh, Jeanette and Dennis a, a great deal uh, because it, we sent them the um, sort of recordings that were Mind Journey and they loved it. And at, we were just too late to be invited to play at the very first UK Electronica, which was in Milton Keynes in 1983. And we were just too late. So they said, um, oh, sorry, apologies, apologies. It was, we were just too late for the 1984 one, which was held in Sheffield, our hometown. Uh, so they said, we would definitely want you to play in 1985 because it will be in Sheffield once again. So that was when Wavestar did their very first concert. So we owe Dennis and Jeanette uh, more or less the first uh, break, if you want to call it that. Uh, we, we got mobbed after the uh, concert. It was scary. <laughs> what happened? 
Uh, well, we, we, it was, I, I, I think you, you probably got a, a copy of the CD from 1985, the first concert. Or, no, or no, you've got, I you've don't. Got the sound file. Mm -hmm. you, also, you got the MP3, I think. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, I do. Ah, yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks, by the way. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We, when we, we enjoyed it, it was scary because it was our very first live performance. And if you listen to the MP3, the audience didn't quite know what to make of us as we started. But as it went on, they got more and more enthusiastic. And by the time we finished, we got a terrific ovation at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, like Bravo, etc., etc., and I went off stage to have a cigarette at the side, which you could in those days. Ah, <laughs> and one of the audience had come round the side tabs, the side curtain, and he said, "I'm sorry to bother you, but would you sign this for me?" So I said, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, yeah. Right. So I saw, I did an autograph on his cassette. He went back round out to the front and he went, he's signing things. <laughs> 300, 300 people chased us up the stairs. It was, it was scary. It was scary. It was frightening. Uh, uh, that was... A, a, a classic happened. We got, we got some, uh, the girls were selling cassettes in the higher part of the venue okay and all these people chased us up here right and the all the cassettes sold out and sean sean is a, a good friend of ours he used he was a rock singer and we used to record him right blah 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 and he he said before the concert what will you do john if someone asks for your autograph and i said bah. I said, nobody knows us. Nobody's going to ask for my autograph. <laughs> well, we, 300 of them came, <laughs> wanted the autograph. And there was a guy with his girlfriend. And he came up to me while we were signing. Signing the autograph. And he said to me, and David was at the side, my side here. And he, the guy said, will you sign my jeans, please? <laughs> He wanted me to sign his trousers. And I said, don't be daft. Don't be silly. And Dave, Dave went, he means it, you fool. He means it. Yeah. So I had to sign this guy's jeans with a felt tip pen. I'd, I've never been as embarrassed in my life. Before. <laughs> but it was funny. It was funny. And everybody thinks it's a wonderful story. So, well, he, yeah. did it. he did, sorry, he didn't have, he did he, no? He didn't have a CD. He didn't. Uh, he he didn't have a tape at hand. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, I I am going to try to share an image of uh, something you know. I think I th hope it wo it works. That's uh, Inkies. Oh, Inkies! Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow. Bravo for Inkies. Yeah. Yes. Not a few of those around. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, I think Andy Garibaldi, who uh, more or less ran Lotus Records that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. He, I still, I still, still talk to him. He's in Dundee in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andy's a great guy. Yeah, it might be interesting to to, to interview him as well. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Well, by the way, I just mentioned that the, the Inky State was the first time I had the chance to listen to fantastic Jean-Philippe Riquel's music. I really fell in love with the guy. And uh, also uh, Philippe Guerre from France, Asia Minor. Have you heard Asia Minor? Yeah. Remember that, man? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. Turkey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I, I've been listening to some of the files, the sound files you sent, John. And I think that the hurting, for example, from the album two, which is one of the newest, uh, has a very intimate feeling to it. And we can accept, I mean, I think I, you can exceptionally hear something close to a piano. Do you ever play the piano or do you, have you ever considered a piano album? 
Guilty as charged, that's me. <laughs> ah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I the the actual uh, song, uh, uh, I, I I just felt it and I played it in one go, uh, and my timing isn't the best because <laughs> I was I was composing as I was recording. So when Paul heard it, he said, "Okay." He said, "We just need to tidy that up a little bit, uh -huh. but keep uh -huh. keep the feeling that you had when you wrote it." It was it was important to keep that. The the, the timing was strange, but the timing was very natural. It was John. Mm -hmm. It was exactly as he felt the music. So what I didn't want to do is go back and redo the whole thing, and lose that feeling. So I played to your timing yeah, rather than but Paul, into mine. Paul listened to it and made tempo, slight tempo adjustments so that he knew what was happening <laughs> because he wasn't here at the time. But he's done a brilliant job on that song because it, it sounds, I think it sounds as though he and I were in the room together and we just sat and played it. And that is amazing to me because I played it on my own and then Paul did his wonderful magic and it sounds as though we just sat down and played it together which we actually didn't but I'm grateful for I'm always grateful to it I owe him 10 million pounds really <laughs> <laughs> uh, life is mine it's, my life is his <laughs> oh well, a lot, a lot of this music, a lot of the music for two, uh, well, I, I don't think there's an exception. It was all created during lockdown. Is that yeah, right? more more or less. Yeah, it was more or less all. Cre I'd got the. I. I'm I'm not bragging or being boastful, but the way we three work, hmm. generally, I come up with little ideas, and. I might develop them a little here in my own studio, which you can see behind us. And then when the three of us get together, of course, the magic starts happening because these two guys are far better players <laughs> than I am. I am not technically a good player because I'll tell you why. Here, here's a Johnny Dyson confession. Right. <laughs> oh, an exclusive. I, can, I I cannot do the Mr. Spock thing. Oh, I, I, it's impossible for me to do that because I don't have individual control over the fingers. Okay. So okay. I will never be a brilliant piano or keyboard player. But these two, wow, <laughs> wow. So I come up with the ideas and then they ruin them. That's it. We spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. It's it's a team. We work as a team, um, because because we are three different people. It puts a different colour on the music. They mm -hmm. they will come up the, as on the new album. They come up with things that I would never have thought of. So it, we work as a team, and it works. And how much are you ready to, to, to you know, um, I forgot the word, to give them space? Because I, I, I don't know how bossy. Is he bossy, Paul? Is he a bossy no. guy? <laughs> so, so, if anything, it's the, it's the other way it's around. It's the other way around. <laughs> oh, 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 well, I'm terrible with him sometimes. We, 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 he'll, he'll give me a piece of music. What do you, what do you think of this? Um, we, end, we just tear it apart, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> but then we put it all back together and then we hope that what comes out of it is, is meaningful. <laughs> we, I, I, once said to, well, I once said to someone who asked us, why was there such a big gap between the two albums? Yeah. I said, because we, we laugh too much. <laughs> we get much more work done if we didn't laugh. <laughs> you spend a lot of time laughing. That's good for your health. Yeah. 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 If if it if it wasn't fun, I don't think we could do it. No, no. honestly, don't think we could do it. We mm. we do the music because we love doing it, not for any reward or mm -hmm. anything. Not that there's that much around these days, but that's another story. Now, uh, 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 some of your pieces 
have deservedly been voted as best songs, uh, which is a term that you just, you know, uh, I know maybe you feel what I feel. Can an instrumental piece be really called a song? I've been wondering this forever. And I asked my music student, I asked everyone, and there doesn't seem to be a, a definition of that. Uh, that, that. That's what they, oh, my cat is trying to push me. <laughs> Uh, do, do you need vocals? Do you need uh, lyrics for yeah, something? See, it is, it is a, a, it's a sort of difficult one, but the only other thing you could call it is a, a piece yeah. or a tune. A tune. Uh, but people do electronic music with very little melody. So mm -hmm. you can't really use the word tune or melody. Uh, so everybody just calls it a song. Well, you can refer to it as a track. Well, I suppose the, the, the word song is, 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 I suppose is, a, <clears throat> is a variation on sing, which, which yeah. is voice, but it doesn't but, matter. It does, but it does bring us to one important point, that something that I've always admired John's music for is uh, tunes. <laughs> yeah. Tunes, tunes, tunes. <clears throat> I, I've, I've heard so much electronic music in my life that has got no melody. And that, I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with that if, if mm. somebody likes that, but it doesn't appeal to me. No. And what brings me back to working with John and working on John's songs, tunes, is that he has melodies. Mm. It's important to me. Well, I, I, my first influence was The Shadows, the guitar band in the UK. And, of course, The Shadows mm. were famous for the terrific, strong melodies. And when I listened to the radio, other styles of music I loved the ones that had a strong melody. So it's my growing up over the years, musical influences. Um, you mentioned Ian Body um, a, a little <laughs> while ago. We have a standing joke between us <laughs> because Ian has moved towards more uh, modular synth music. And he, he, he mocks me, makes fun of me, for doing tunes, melodies, and he he was doing he, he was doing a concert in I think it was Birmingham, and he was using modular uh, synthesis, and there was no melody, but one part of it was very nearly uh, a little repeated motif, right? and I went up to him in a break <laughs> and I said, Ian, I said. Be careful, there was very nearly a melody there, be careful. <laughs> and he could not stop laughing. So we have this standing joke between us about melody or not, as the case may be. He's a, Ian's a great guy. He's, he's a yeah, great yeah, well, in fact, he, some of his tracks, uh, some of his tunes or oh, yeah, pieces uh, are far darker than what I've heard from you. Oh, yeah. T yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I keep saying C. I've been talking to a friend in Italy, so I'm, I, I, I might slip into Italiano. Very good. <laughs> Only un, un po, poco. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, you know, uh, I was going to ask about the influences. Uh, what about, when, when did you begin listening to the German uh, mu musicians? I suppose that you did have get some, some influence on that side, and you, Paul, as well. Uh, no, uh, well, for, well, Alan's the first in that I, I never did. I never, I never listened to uh, electronic music. Uh, mm -hmm. I was, I was a prog rocker. I was into Genesis and Yes and Rush and all, hey. all that kind of stuff. So I, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. seen it. Yeah, the head. I thought, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think Paul will get the first invite to Santiago then. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I was, I, I was a prog rocker, so just uh, that's a quick answer for me. But for, for John, no, I, I, as I said, I grew up with the uh, Shadows, really. Um, and <clears throat> believe it or not, I I think I heard somebody mention Tangerine Dream, but I never heard their music many years ago. Before I met Dave, David Ward Hunt, before I met him, and I. I, only, I, I was sort of only interested in the melodic side of music, i.e. the shadows, um, any orchestral with a, a music, with a, even classical, with a strong theme. Uh, and when we did uh, Moonwind, 
uh, people don't believe me, but I had never, ever heard Pink Floyd. Right? And someone mentioned, it's, it's very Pink Floyd, that title track. And when and I, Dave played me the uh, album track, I, which, what, which one is it? The one that's very like, uh, which one is it? The one that's like Moonwind. Anyway, one of their famous Not tracks. Floyd fan. But one of their famous tracks. I can't, I can't remember which. Wish you were here or something like that. I don't know. What more, than, more than a track, I think it's the style, the game of style in general. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I got no, no, I got no. it. It's okay. <laughs> but when David when David played me the Pink Floyd track, I was horrified. I said, But they'll all think I've ripped it off and I've never heard their music in my life. Um uh, and people have asked me where that came from, the the moonwind that we do. And it was my uh my cousin's husband and I in the very early days, and we're talking 1962, that long ago, 1962, we used to play a simple version of Moonwind on two acoustic Spanish guitars. And we called it our space tune, right? And that was in 1962. So I think that was before Pink Floyd were ever thought of. <laughs> so that's my story. Wow. Do you believe in telepathy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that is true. 1961-62. That that, wow. that that was the birth of the basis of Moonwind, the, the song. Yeah. All right. Now uh I'm going to talk about uh, the constant constantly reissued Moonwind. Uh, you have some stories about the people, uh, you know, losing the cover art and all that. What do you yeah. think, John and Paul, that Wavestar achieved uh, with that album that still remains a total favorite for everyone? Uh, there's something that makes that album special. Uh, and I think that's what uh, Dennis and Jeanette Entley and Andy Garibaldi got hooked by it. I don't know. No, it was well. It was actually it, it was the it was the first two cassette albums, uh, Man Journey and Zenith, which were incredibly popular, um, and then somehow the American company uh, uh, Gem Records and the Audion label, which Larry Fast was involved with, uh, they must have heard about us, and we got offered a, a recording contract to for Moonwind which is how that album came to be. So, is it okay? Yeah, is one that... one channel was, you know, disappearing. I don't know why. Is that a special okay. effects you want to apply? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know how they heard of us. Maybe it was just, maybe someone played it over in the States and they heard about us, I don't know. But they offered us a deal and we were we were thrilled to accept uh, it, it came out on all three back then formats a really high quality cassette cd in a long case yeah and, and a, a high quality vinyl uh, and the reviews were fantastic uh, and we couldn't believe it that's just something you don't know i've still got an original cd in the long case i'm yeah. still wrapped in cellophane on open <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Paul, some some young people don't know those big cases because they used to, you know, uh, but they made it uh, people uh, find records easier in a record store because they were like the size of an LP, I guess, or similar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, I never, <clears throat> well, I must have had a copy uh, years and years and years ago, right? But until maybe, I don't know what happened to them. Um, until about four or five years ago i never had a cd of the original moonwind the usa and uh ron boats in holland uh the netherlands uh, he managed to get me one i think it was ron apologies if it was somebody else i think it was ron and he said I can't believe you haven't got one of these so he, mm -hmm. he, fa he found me one from somewhere so 
it's somewhere around. I now have a CD of Moonwind, so fine. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Rod. You uh, possibly, but, you, yeah, go ahead, please. Sean, the rock singer, he, he, obviously, we got some promo copies of the vinyl album. Mm. And as Paul says, he's still got the CD in the long packet. Mm. And Sean has an actual vinyl where the plastic has not been opened. The mm -hmm. cover, it's yeah. not been opened. Yeah, same here with the CD. Yeah. Well, can you see the, can you see the, you were talking about the covers, the, those frame ones that I have at the back, those are the original carton boxes, the Genesis Live, wow. all of those are boxes. Yeah. yeah. They are, they, I frame, I, 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 sorry, I had them framed long ago. Yeah. Right. What can I see? Genesis Live, selling yeah. Is yeah. Uh, yeah, Return to Forever, Romantic Warrior, Cocteau Twins, uh, Selling oh, England by the Pound. If you're going to talk prog rock, I'm going to make a coffee. So <laughs> I'm offended now. No, I'm not really. <laughs> yeah, we, we, in fact, we should we should have a, a special talk about prog rock, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's his job. That's his job to make the coffees. <laughs> okay, let's have a break now.